Tonight I'm gonna preach on something that was pe that was preached a few months back by our pastor here. And it's stuck with me ever since. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm gonna talk on sin. Uh-oh. And tonight we're stop arting off in Judges chapter 16 and verse 6. When you find it, say amen. 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 Judges what? 16 6. 16 6. Amen. <clears throat> and Delilah said, said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her, brought up to her seven green withs which had not been dried, and she, he bound him with them. Green widths means fresh cords. Yeah, amen. Seven fresh cords. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and he brake the widths, as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire, so his strength was not known. Amen. He told her, Bind me with fresh ropes, and my yeah. strength will be gone. Then, she says, The Philistines are here. He gets up and breaks the cords. Amen. And Delilah sent Adam to Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. <coughs> See, this is the second time she's asking. Amen. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that were never occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from his, from off his arms like a thread. Amen. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound, and he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, with the web, and she fastened it with the pin, and said unto them, the, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep, and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. He still had his strength. Amen. And she said unto him, how canst thou say, I, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lie. She wants to know where her strength is for the Philistines, because they were the enemy of Israel at this time. Amen. They were Israel's enemy. Come on. And Samson had wiped out a whole lot of them. Amen. I don't know exactly what the number is. I don't even know what the Come Bible on. tells. Does it tell, Brother Billy? It's a bunch. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart. He's about to tell her yeah. what ha 
how to take his strength away. Come on. And said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, if his head gets shaved, his hair is shaved off, he won't have a strength. Come on. Then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. This time it is not like all the other times. This time it is the true, real thing. Come on. And it's going to cost him Amen. his sight yeah. and his strength. Amen. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath sh showed me all his heart. Showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. Amen. <clears throat> she was promised money if she could get the secret <clears throat> for the strength. She was Amen. promised money if she could figure out what the source of Samson's strength was. Yeah. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went away from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. He didn't know the Lord had left him. Come on. He didn't know that God was gone. His spirit wasn't there. Amen. And you'll see what this caused. But by telling Delilah what the source of strength was. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. That is what happened. Amen. He told older the source of his strength. He got up after his hair was all cut off yeah. He got up thinking that the Spirit of God was with him, but it wasn't. And now his eyes had been put out. Come on. They had bound him with feathers of brass, and he's grinding in the prison house. Amen. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after, his, after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God. I, I think we've heard about Dagon before. Amen. The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant and he fell apart. Yeah. And to rejoice... For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and made, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me, that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Amen. Now putting him in between the pillars was... The guy who was bringing him out is fault. Come on. Now he's standing in between the pillars. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof 
about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport, entertained them. Yeah, amen. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Yeah. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up. And the one with this right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords, and upon all the people that were therein. So the de dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his whole life. Amen. He slew more when he died than whenever he was alive. Amen. Second Samuel and chapter eleven. We're gonna talk about David now. Eleven verse two. We're starting at verse two. And it came to pass. In an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. He was actually supposed to be with his army at this time. But he was at, he was in the kingdom. He was supposed to be with the army, but he, he was in Jerusalem. Amen. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired of the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Urah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David said to Joab, saying, Send me Ura the Hittite. And Joab sent Ura to David. And when Ura was come unto him, David demanded of him how jo Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. He asked for a report of the war. Amen. And David said to Urah, Go down to thy, to thy house and wash thy feet. Refre refresh yourself. And Urah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Urah slept at the door of the king's house, with all the servants of his Lord, and went not down to his own house. And when they had told David, saying, Yura went not down unto his house, David said unto Yura, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Yura said, Ask said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. They're out at the battlefield. They're out where the battle was, was taking place. Amen. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to, to Yura, Tarry here today also and tomorrow. I will let thee depart 
Nazareth, so, so you're a abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. He didn't go to his house. Amen. He stayed there. I'm guessing it was doormat, the doormat or something. At the door of wherever King David was living. And it come to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Uriah. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. The first way I was pronouncing it, or this way. Uriah or Uriah. <coughs> and he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Set him in the front of the battle, the hottest part of the battle, where most of the people were shooting their arrows and everything, and pull the rest of the men back Amen. and leave him there. Yeah. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto the place where he knew that the lion men were, strong fighting men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. Amen. He sent, I'm guessing, a letter to David concerning the war. What had happened in the war. Chapter 12, starting in verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing save one little wee lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did meat of his it did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveller unto the rich man, and he spared to take one of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come, that came to him, that was come to him. This rich man had like, I'm guessing a thousand sheep. And he has to take one sheep from someone who only has one. Amen. Out of thousands of sheep, he couldn't spare even one. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Amen. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Amen. You are the man, David. I'm all. This was, this was like a parable. Yeah. yeah. And it was what David had done. Amen. You are the man, David, who did this thing. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee
thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Both Israel and Judah were ruled by David. Amen. <clears throat> and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. Hold on, I've lost my place. And hast taken his wife to be thy wife. And hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. David was that man. And David, I ain't gonna give you the right passage of scripture because I'm not sure. Somewhere in Psalms, it has his prayer. Amen. After the slain. First Samuel chapter 31. Now we're going to talk about Saul. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and, Abin and Abinadab and <coughs> Melchishua, I can't pronounce that one, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. And then Saul unto his armor-bearer said unto his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith. Least these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Amen. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword. Yeah. And died with him. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor bearer, and all his men that same day together. Yeah. And before this happened, he went to a witch. Amen. To call up Samuel, and Samuel said, You will be with me tomorrow. Yeah. Now Saul had sinned, so it wasn't the real Samuel. It was a disguised. Uh -oh. yeah. It was the devil disguised as Samuel, and he said, You will be with me tomorrow. Last stop. Luke 22 and verse 55. We're going to talk about Peter now and his denial of Christ. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him, was also with Jesus. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, 
Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And, and immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. Amen. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crew, crow, Thou shalt deny, deny me thrice. You will deny me three times before Amen. the cock crows. Amen. And Peter says, I won't do it. Yeah. I would never do it. Amen. And he just did it. Yeah. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Amen. And in the book of Acts, he preached the most powerful message he ever preached. Amen. On the day of Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap.